now that we know how to conduct hypothesis tests for both the population proportion and the population mean, it's important to take a step back and just remember something that's very critical to the idea of hypothesis tests. And that is that not all hypothesis tests actually create actionable differences in real life. In other words, there's a difference between being statistically significant and practically significant. All right, so when a result has a small p-value, we say that it is statistically significant and we reject the null hypothesis, right? That's what we've been doing in these two sections. But that does not always mean that the result is important, right? Real life important. So let me give you an example. At a large company, employee satisfaction is measured with a standardized test for which scores range from 0 to 100. The mean score on this test was 74. The company then implemented a new policy that allowed telecommuting so that employees could work from home. After the policy change, the mean score for a sample of employees was 76. Ooh, big difference. All right, so in order to determine whether the mean score for all employees, mu, had improved, had improved after the new policy was implemented, a hypothesis test was performed. All right, so that word improvement, that's a big idea. So we need to think about that. So improved means our hypotheses are going to be mu equals 74, what it used to be, and mu greater than 74. So we want to know, have we gone up in, in employee satisfaction? All right, so then suppose the p-value for this test was found to be 0.025. Is this result statistically significant at the 0 0.05 level? Now, 0 0.05 level, when they say that, what they're saying is that alpha is 0 0.05. And the p-value is 0 0.025. So there's your p-value right there. Explain. All right, so if your p-value is less than your alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. Just as a reminder, let me hold up the inferential statistics sheet here. You reject H0 if your p-value is less than your alpha. Okay, so our p-value is less than alpha, so the answer is yes. This result would be statistically significant because we would reject the null hypothesis since the p-value is 0 0.025 is less than your alpha. Rejection of your null hypothesis is what makes it statistically significant, quote unquote. All right. Now suppose the human resources manager, if you have never worked at a company, that's the person in charge of all the people that work there. Um, kind of in charge of hiring, firing, getting documents run, that kind of thing. The human resources manager now writes a report stating that the new policy resulted in a large improvement in employee satisfaction. And I bolded and highlighted this, right? Large improvement. Explain why the human resources manager is not interpreting the results correctly. Well, let's think about this. We went from 74 to 76. It's not like you all of a sudden turned your workplace into Google. You know, everybody's got slides and, you know, beach ball, volleyball for breaks. We don't have that. So we've improved it slightly. It was statistically significant. In other words, we were able to reject the null hypothesis. But it's such a small change in score that it doesn't really have any practical significance for the company. Right? The company isn't all of a sudden going to be drawing in lots of workers because of their large improvement, right? That's just not going to happen. They didn't all of a sudden transform into a different company. So it's a small difference in reality from 74 to 76. Even though it was statistically significant, it's not practically significant. It doesn't really mean much for in real life to this company. All right, so let me just put this another way to you. And sometimes when people look at data, they can lose the forest for the trees, if you will. So the forest being the practical significance. What's the real life implications of this? The trees being every little hypothesis test you run. And there are companies, organizations, universities, colleges, hospitals that all look at data and they run a lot of tests on that data. And sometimes they lose sight of the fact that if they have a statistically significant result, that doesn't always mean that they have a large effect in the real world there and I just added that a little bit. So reality is the forest, right? Practical reality, right? Is the forest. And then statistical significance is your trees. And you don't want to lose your forest, the, the, the vision of your big forest for fear of dissecting every little tree by sitting there and focusing in on every little test. You get so bogged down in the statistical test that you lose sight of whether there's a big impact from the study. Don't do that, right? 
A small difference in reality means it doesn't have a lot of practical significance. So when a result is statistically significant, all we can conclude is that the true value of the parameter is different than the value specified in the null hypothesis. That's it. We cannot conclude that the difference is large enough to be important. In other words, it might not have a very great practical significance, real life significance for us. But yet people do studies all the time. Sure. Well, it's because data can show you really important stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that every hypothesis test doesn't show you good stuff. What I'm saying is you want to pay it close attention. Does it not only have statistical significance, but practical significance? Ideally, you want both. Yeah, let me put that in there. There, I changed up, I put it kind of down here just so I could write it a little bit better. So ideally, you want both practical and statistical significance. Significance from our studies. There we go. Now keep in mind, this is a broad idea that actually applies to all our hypothesis tests, not just the ones in chapter 10, but chapter 11, 12, and so on. There, and I just added that bit as well. So this is not just true for chapter 10 and just the first two tests you've learned. This is true for all tests in general. There, I even added in general. All right, we're done with that. We'll meet back here to do the next example in the next.